Okay. So pressure thrust is how we do this with air. It's a little different in physics, but the principle works the same way. You're trying to move through the air without disturbing any of it. Trying to not take any of it with you. And so in a pressure thrust concept like the old Oshmeet body here, natural laminar flow would be possible, except Oshmeet didn't do that. He tripped the flow clear up front, 10% cord. And uh, so we have this, even a turbulent flow body can get back past the maximum thickness. And if you suck that boundary layer in and you spit it out the back, you know what kind of drag number you're going to have? How about 2% of what you would normally have for a body of that volume? Um, this is me making it up, folks. You can read the studies yourself. And in fact, both uh, results improved by 20% over Serretta's results that were 20 years before him. And a recent University of Washington study, I don't know if it's been published or not, has gone as another step here on both states. So in synergy, the, the pressure thrust concept is minimized because we can't just do that when you've got a weight compeller. All we can do with, the, with synergy is have uh, a nice, gentle, concave transition feeding the prop as gently as we can, and by this we recover the boundary layer drag. We won't get pressure thrust. In fact, I don't want pressure thrust. I just want zero drag. So that means good weight and marsh propulsion. And as I mentioned, the number of blades and their design really counts. I'm not going to show you Synergy's actual fan, but that's, uh, that's an idea. So what we feel like is necessary for the airplanes of the future to be commercially successful is to exploit the human factor needs and the aerodynamic needs together at the same time. We have to have big, roomy, comfortable airplanes that can fly fast, at higher altitudes, safely point to point. And we don't want to give up anything that we already know. Right? Why would we want to build a fast airplane? They just land too fast and kill people. Well, don't accept that. Build a fast airplane that lands nice and slow on a short grass field. Or do what we're talking about doing, which is going the next steps beyond synergy with designs that are even more optimized for their short field performance. A lot of people look at this plane and think it's two places. <laughs> little roots there. That, that's a five to seven place plane and it's huge. Uh, we've got a lot of room in it and it turns out that we could be room here again if we wanted to. But I didn't count the number of square inches I would be sanding, folks. It's a big job. <laughs> the quarter scale aircraft that we brought here uh, first flew in 2007. It was not designed to demonstrate any of the drag reduction technologies. Those were already demonstrated. What it was designed to do was to tell me whether or not I had uh, my simulators lying to me. And it told me that, uh, that they weren't lying at all. It told me that they were uh, that they were right on. Sounds pretty cool, but the drag sound that you hear uh, is because we didn't have any of the gorgeous wing filleting on there at the time. It was done with, uh, without any of the wing fillets at all, so there's a real turbulent flow environment into the prop. But that is about two thirds throttle on a two kilowatt electric motor. The aircraft weighs 30 pounds, and it has uh, just it's not dynamically scaled at all. It's just proportionately scaled, drop down from full size version 18 version synergy. So it has about 16 times the drag of our full scale airplane. Uh, the other reason that we built it, I'll go back to that slide here, was to validate the. Um, structural finite element analysis. I was concerned, you know, there's no baseline for how this stuff runs and moves and bends, and uh, I needed a baseline. So when we put this together, we found out that uh, the stresses were quite manageable. 
the direction that they would occur in was totally different from what you'd expect. And we had to mitigate that with, um, with a lot of different things for the full scale radar on the planet. He is displacing the volume of air in the same way that a smoothly streamlined, optimized body of air would. And that has a lot to do with reducing the wing interference drag problem that everyone wants to point out that exists with box wings. Box wing airplanes in particular have a huge wing interference drag problem at each intersection. But when you have favorable biplane interference, you don't have that problem. We've got not only subsonic area ruling helping us out to mitigate the drag of uh, intersections, but we also have this phenomenon of favorable biplane interference. And I want to mention just for a minute uh, the fact that no program presently gets this right that I've seen, other than just uh, direct element modeling and CFD, all your spreadsheet calculator programs and stuff like that, and the textbook methods, X-plane, uh, they all give you negative biplane interference. And so if this was a wing pushing air down, and that's a wing pushing air down, you're going to have them fighting over the air in between. But what we have with synergy is favorable or constructive by plane interference. Because they're operating at different opposing angles of attack, the upper surface talks to the bottom and the bottom talks to the top, and together they're able to accelerate and influence a larger volume of air than either airflow alone. It's a venture. We're creating a venturi over each wing. And that causes favorable uh, translations of the pressure gradients between the elements, the winglets, the V-tails, and the wing. And your uh, supposed interference strike problem pretty much goes out the window. What little remains is easily uh, addressed by having a staggered and uh, blended, really nicely blended configurations. We do have um, a one of our actual winglets modeled up and then brought it. We'll have it at the Aero Innovate event later on. So that's mostly the overview of Synergy. I know uh, there's a lot of questions out there and I want to take them. If you have any more detailed information, uh, want more detailed information, like I said, go to our website, our Facebook page, and our Google Synergy aircraft. And uh, you'll find out a lot. And if you don't get your satisfaction there, give me a call or an email. I'll have to answer your questions. Let's start now. What do you got? Okay, the question is, the ultimate goal uh, is, to, is it to create a kit from this aircraft. Um, we've already learned that people want this plane. So we have to respond to a demand for it somehow. I designed Synergy to be a, a study in alternative manufacturing techniques and processes to deliver the kind of airplane improvement at the kit market level that we've seen in the radio control world. Um, we, I used to build stick and tissue balsa models just like everybody else and graduated on up with a monocoat and I thought that was the greatest thing in the world. But nowadays, of course, you buy an almost ready to fly kit and plug in three parts and go fly your airplane. That's where the kit market can go if manufacturers are willing to shoulder the risk of their 51 or their 49%, which is how can we make it in three hours so that they can make it in four. So there are ways that that process can be enabled, and Synergy has been designed as a modular system. We're almost done building the parts that will snap together in a week. And that's the idea, is that those parts are what the consumer will eventually get. Uh, the ways that you can do this are enabled by the design of the airplane itself. It's got a very large, strong weight, it's got a very large, roomy fuselage, so we don't have to scrimp on areas that like I've got my my, wing, my fuselage cores are up to two inches thick in places. And that just means that I can just print that part and fiberglass it. It's quick and it's easy. How's the contest airplane coming? How's the contest airplane coming? Um, we are now going at the speed we should have been going about 18 months ago. The only difference is that now we have enough money to keep working on it. So we're making up for about a nine month delay. And uh, I would say that the odds are now 25% that 
that we will make the Green Flag Challenge, which was never really our primary goal. It was just a nice $1.6 million bonus. In your full scale, what's the square footage of your main The square footage? Um, the square footage of the Green Flag Challenge airplane or the, of the K airplane? Okay, the one we're doing right now is 156 square feet of wing and about 44 square feet of tail. And that's going to be the equivalent of a two-place? The equivalent of a two-place? No, it's a six-place. So you're going to be entering the cockpit for Yeah, Synergy was designed uh, as a practical electric airplane. The breakthrough was so significant that I couldn't put an electric motor in it. I needed to use something that was existing as a power plant. I selected the Delta Hawk diesel. So I designed this airplane for the Delta Hawk diesel for myself and my family, what we really wanted to do. <coughs> and found that um, uh, you know it was it was a big deal. So the Green Flight Challenge then came along and our numbers said that we went it pretty much hands down if we could get it built in time and the issue was, you know, do we have the dollars to do that and we have the resources. Uh, what do I expect the weight to be at? We're targeting 1,250 pound empty weight. Um, the aircraft is designed around a 3,100 pound gross weight. Full scale load testing. Full scale load testing, absolutely. One of these pictures has got five monkeys standing on our wing. Actually, it's not even our wing, it's our uh, internal fuel tank core assembly. It's part of the wing. What G loading? Uh, that remains to be seen. My, my goal was 9G loading. Yeah. Am I using exotic composite? No, not really. These are uh, carbon fiber, Kevlar, and fiberglass. I'm using Kevlar and fiberglass up front for its robust durability and impact uh, and for its electrical transparency. Didn't want carbon fiber interfering with anything up front, and I might be using a little portable radios or electronics. Uh, but the wings are all carbon, and uh, a lot of the foam materials are even off the shelf stuff. Spider foam, you know, fairly low density spider foam. Um, we do have some pretty exotic core materials. The yellow stuff that you'll see in some of the photos are uh, Corcel. And that's uh, extremely expensive, but it's it's an underutilized core in aviation. I'd like to see it get out there a little bit more. Yes, I'm there. Uh, am I selling plans for it? Are we going to get kits out there? How much will they cost? Uh, the young man would probably like to know that when he's able to fly. Uh, I don't know. You know, the, the thing about this is, is that the cost of the airplane is very low from a material standpoint. It's very low from a labor standpoint. It should be possible for this to radically impact the cost of getting into a, uh, an airplane of this caliber. But it ain't going to work out that way, folks. I'm sorry to let you know. You've got airplanes that cost $130,000 that it's competing with. And the value proposition will probably be that this kit is just as expensive, or maybe a little bit less expensive than everybody else's. And that has to pay for the extreme cost of getting there. Uh, there will be multi-million dollar investments required to bring this to market at the volume that's, that it's going to take. Uh, I told people a long time ago that from what we saw in private disclosure, we need to build 10,000 of these things yesterday. And that's going to take some real horsepower uh, to invest in the necessary to do that. So I see it being like a VCR it was back in the day. You know, I, I remember buying a four-head VCR with $390. It was a big deal, you know. And, um, nowadays, 15, 20 bucks, and you can buy a digital thing with one moving part. Um, and so that's really where this will go over time. I think that the kit will become an affordable aircraft and it will probably be uh, in high demand as an expensive aircraft at first. Give a little more detail on the placement of the 